Now I know it's subtle, but do you see that background behind the hero image? Just these little bits of color? It really does make this section work. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up backgrounds just like that using a free Figma account, even if you've never designed before a day in your life. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at the page we're gonna be working on. Here we have a nice hero section with a big screenshot on the right hand side. And I think this could really use some of that color treatment just peeking out behind the screenshot somewhere. So to do that, we're gonna hop into Figma into our completely free account, and we're gonna add a new frame. Here over on the right hand side, we'll see some preset options for sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a desktop size just to give us some kind of frame of reference for sizing these backgrounds. Here in the tools panel, I'm gonna go ahead and grab an ellipse, and I'm gonna do just some kind of oval and tilt this slightly. Here, we'll just place it inside of our frame so we can generally put it in the position we want and something like that is fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click Shift and Option while I drag this out so I can make a couple duplicate copies. I may even stagger these a little bit. The great thing about this setup is we really don't need to be precise in any kind of way. We're gonna blur out these little shapes so much, they're really gonna be unrecognizable. So you almost can't mess this up. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some colors. So for this first one, we might just go with some kind of bright blue color. For the second one, we can go with something really contrasting, like a nice bright pink. And for the last one, I think we could go with some kind of teal color. So as you can see, we're not being very precise, but that gets us some kind of color on the page. Now, the next thing we wanna do is grab all three of the colors and head down to the effects panel in the right-hand corner. We'll click on effects. We'll click the drop down to select layer blur. Here, we can click this effects setting icon so we can start changing the amount of blur. I'm just gonna guess and say something like 150 pixels. You can see automatically this has gone ahead and blurred everything very similar to what we saw before. Of course, if you wanna adjust that, you can click it again. I'm gonna go with 200 pixels just to make it even more blurry. Now for me, I think the stacking order isn't great in here. I think I want the teal all the way in the back, then the purple, then the blue on top. So over here on this layers panel, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the blue and drag it to the top and then we'll grab the pink and put it in the middle. This way I kind of like the mix of colors a little bit better, and I think that'll work perfectly in our design. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab all three of these shapes and press Control or Command G on my keyboard to group them, and we're gonna head down to the Export panel. We'll click on Export, we'll change this from a PNG to an SVG, and we can hit Export. Now let's go ahead and take note of this file name here. I have done this a couple times preparing for this video. So what we're grabbing is group one parentheses two. So I'm gonna jump into the editor here. We'll open up our list view and grab this outermost container where we're gonna be adding our background. So here we'll go under backgrounds and we'll go to browse under image URL. We'll upload this newest file we created and hit select. So now we can see this is already in the background here. Here, I have this set to a size of 50%, so it only takes up about 50% of the screen. You can see here, we could play with that a little bit and maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then I have it positioned at the top right of the section. Of course, I think by default, it is at center center, but we don't want this to show perfectly in the center. We want this to be at the top right. You can also play with the image opacity if you feel like these colors are too bright, and I do. We could bring this to maybe 50%. So. Let's go ahead and update this page and go take a look at it on the front end. Here's what it looks like with the color, and here's what it looked like without the color. It's such a tiny detail, but it really does make a huge difference in the design of this page. Even though this was a really short tutorial, I hope you can see how easy it is to create these kind of abstract backgrounds using Figma. Now there are some ways to do this just with CSS, but I found that it takes so long for me to get this exactly the way I want it to look. And besides, when I export the file from Figma, the SVG file is only about one kilobyte. So even though it is one more request when I load the website, it's such a small request that I really don't feel like it has any kind of bearing on the performance of a page. If you enjoyed this video, I would really love to see a thumbs up on it. I haven't done much Figma content before, but Figma is something I'm into every single day. So if you'd like to see more content like this, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. And if you wanna make sure to catch my next video, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.